Hi, last week was my first KHF board meeting since becoming CEO. We had a full agenda to help frame our work with the upcoming strategic planning process and a very robust discussion talking about health disparities and racial inequities in Kansas. These initial discussions are so important as they help build on the vision that the board set out in July 2020 to address long-standing race and equity issues. We started our disparity research by examining life expectancy data in Kansas. We know that life expectancy is a measure that's often used to gauge the overall health of a community. Not everyone has the same opportunity to be healthy where they live. Life expectancy data, the average age to which people can expect to live, is a powerful tool to show that people living just a few miles apart may have vastly different opportunities for a long life. This data can then be used by policymakers, foundations, and others to help us decide where we should target limited resources to address communities with the greatest need. The state life expectancy in Kansas is 78.6 years, but there are 13 census tracts in Kansas where the life expectancy is below 70. These areas fall in Wyandotte, Sedgwick, Shawnee, Cherokee, and Leavenworth counties. It's probably not surprising that the census tract with the lowest life expectancy is in Wyandotte County. What might be more surprising is that the life expectancy in this particular census tract is 62 and a half years, which is 23 years lower than the census tract with one of the highest life expectancies in Johnson County, just 10 miles away. What's also most interesting and sad is that there is a direct correlation between the prevalence of disease, life expectancy, and historically redlined communities. Redlining is a term used to describe the discriminatory federal housing policies that grew out of the Depression era and essentially left people of color out of the new suburban communities that were created. The term redlining comes from color-coded maps created by the federal government of every metropolitan area in the country. The color codes were designed to indicate where it was safe to insure mortgages and places where African Americans lived or lived nearby were color-coded red to indicate to appraisers that these neighborhoods were too risky to insure mortgages. These policies have had long-lasting impacts on communities. Today, African American incomes average about 60% of white incomes, but African American wealth is about 5% of white wealth. Most middle-class families in this country gain their wealth from the equity they have in their homes. So this enormous difference between a 60% income ratio and a 5% wealth ratio is almost entirely attributable to federal housing policy implemented through the 20th century. An article from the Washington Post listed Wichita as the third most redlined city in the country. So it's not too surprising that seven of the 13 lowest life expectancy communities in Kansas are right here in Wichita. It's also important for us to look at the changing demographics in Kansas. We commissioned a report by the Kansas Health Institute in 2018 to look at the shifting population trends over the next several decades. The report noted that our population is aging, becoming more diverse, and concentrating in urban areas. The white population is expected to decline by over 20%, while the black population and Hispanic population is expected to grow substantially over the next five decades. Notably, the Hispanic population is expected to nearly quadruple by 2066, or increase 286.9%. I think this expected shift in demographics has to be part of our analysis. It has very significant implications that we really need to consider as we do our work. I was so pleased that our KHF board enthusiastically supports this direction for our work and our strategic planning process. We had a robust discussion about leveraging our resources to address root causes. And through our strategic planning process, we will determine how we can have the most impact. Most importantly, we know that we can't do any of this work by ourselves. It is critical that we continue to build on our equity work 
and empower partners to reduce disparities and strengthen communities. It's an exciting time, and we commit to sharing our progress with you as this process unfolds. Thank you so much for what you do to help improve health and build stronger communities in Kansas.